So if you've been following the presidential election, you've been hearing some weird terms like brokered convention, superdelegate, and hand size. Today I'm going to explain what superdelegates are and what a contested or brokered convention is. In the primaries that are going on right now, voters are not so much actually electing their nominees as they are voting to tell their elected delegates which candidates the delegates should vote for in the conventions this summer. Yeah, it's an election to tell elected delegates who to elect. It is voteception. Side note, when he made his movie Inception, do you think Christopher Nolan had any idea that he was gonna be changing our cultural lexicon by making the suffix ception to mean a thing inside of a thing? That must have been a terrible development for the Russian doll metaphor industry. So anyway, these delegates are usually local party officials who travel to the nominating convention in the summer, and most of them are required to vote for whoever their district voted that they should vote for. Ah, but that's just regular delegates. There's another kind of delegate called a super delegate. Technically, they're called unbound or unpledged delegates, but almost everyone says super delegates because it sounds cooler. For the same reason, in the rest of this video, I will refer to regular delegates as muggle delegates. Unlike muggle delegates, super delegates go to the convention and they're allowed to vote for any candidate they want to. Proportionally speaking, the Democratic Party has much larger amount of super delegates than the Republican Party, and this is significant because most of the super delegates have pledged to vote for Hillary Clinton. Since these super delegates are voting for anyone they want to in the first round rather than representing an electorate back home, this is what Bernie Sanders supporters would call a hijacking of democracy. By the convention, all the delegates cast their votes, and if no candidate gets more than 50% of the vote, Vote, then all the delegates vote again and again and again. They keep voting round after round until a candidate passes that 50% threshold. And that scenario is what people are referring to when they say there might be a brokered or contested convention. It's a possibility in this election cycle because there's still three Republicans left in the race so they can split the vote among themselves, preventing any one of them from getting a majority. Donald Trump is winning, but over half of the delegates are already pledged, which makes the math very difficult for him to pass that 50% threshold. If no candidate receives over 50% of the vote, in the first round, it's as if all those muggle delegates have suddenly been bitten by some kind of politically radioactive spider, and they have become the equivalent of super delegates. Most of them, by their state rules, are now allowed to vote for anyone they want to. Like literally anyone, including people who weren't even running for president. See, Republicans have this rules committee that sets up all the rules for nominations a day or two before the convention. In 2012, Mitt Romney supporters changed the rule of 40 to prevent a dark horse candidate from challenging challenging him at the last minute at the convention. But there's nothing preventing that same committee from changing those rules back so that, for example, Mitt Romney could become a Dark Horse candidate and challenge at the convention. It's unclear if they could actually change the rules to allow a fictional candidate. Maybe someone who has experience with brokered conventions like Matt Santos or, spoiler alert, Frank Underwood. So if the first round doesn't produce a majority candidate, all of those muggle delegates start having these meetings with each other, trying to sort of trade favors and get people to vote for their candidate. Now I know it sounds crazy, but it has actually happened before. In 1924, the Democratic Party was so split over the issue of prohibition, that they voted for 102 rounds before finally a dark horse compromise candidate emerged and won in the 103rd round. Now, there hasn't been a contested convention since 1952. The closest thing we've had in recent history was in 1976 when Gerald Ford did not win over 50% of the delegates during the primary election. But at the convention, he got over 50% of the votes in the first round because he won over the superdelegates, which allowed Gerald Ford to edge out a surprising challenge from a famous entertainment personality, Ronald Reagan. Hey. 